There are changes, like in a sporting analogy, force you to think about, given the game we're playing, given the kind of institution we are, how does our strategy enable us to play the game better, at a higher level, to improve our level of performance and efficiency, our service offering, and so on. Getting better at the existing game, and goodness knows that's a big enough challenge in today's world where what was quality yesterday is a taken for granted today. But I think the kind of change that causes even more problems are the kind of changes around this which actually alter the game and the rules. Getting better is not sufficient. In fact, sometimes it's a problem if you get better at even the wrong game. And the thing that's causing a lot of challenge for companies today are changes in the landscape that force you to rethink who you are, how you'll compete in a very different way tomorrow for customer loyalty, for customer attractiveness, and to keep your own franchise going. And it's those game-changing and rules-changing shifts that we know are much harder for us as executives to take on board. Sometimes the data is not clear. Sometimes it starts with a weak signal. Sometimes you have to not react to the phenomenon, but actually become the driver of it. And what we tend to know is that many organizations either see it late or don't understand it, or try to oppose it in some particular way. It's fascinating for me, I don't know about your own examples, but we all have them, how the absolute dominant players today in the smartphone industry, neither of them, Google with Android, and the famous Apple, of course, neither of them several years ago would even be thought of as a phone company. And here they are dominating the industry, which is a convergence platform for phones that do so many things on one box, almost to the point that the phone itself becomes subservient to the other things they could do. And neither of these companies would be regarded as a phone company. So one of the issues is, how do we not just see the change, but what stops great companies reacting productively to these changes? And in the sessions I have and the discussions I have with executives, one thing I talk a lot about is the power of something I call the dominant logic of an institution. And it's a kind of psychological idea that says, as we grow up in life, as we take pictures of the world around us, we store these mental images in our brain, very much in the back of our brain. And they become pictures and mental models of the world we know. And they have deeply rooted assumptions about who we are, who our customers are, our users are, and how we create value for them. And one of the great problems is, of course, that game-changing shifts can challenge the dominant logic of an institution. Just look at the tremendous problems faced by the world's music industry over a long period of time in which the power of the internet caused them such intellectual hardship in terms of saying, what is, is this stealing? Is this IP protection? What do we do with our customers? Is there a different way to think about the problem? And while they were debating their dominant logic, of course, a company called Apple, with no background in music, no technology, no artists, no IP, actually creates the digital platform for music in the new era. One of the hardest things to do is to know what your dominant logic is. What are these assumptions that tend to send signals to our brain about what really is happening there, what the problem is, and how we deal with it? And I think one of the most important things companies can do is have a productive, a very healthy, non-critical conversation about the basic assumptions in their dominant logic and how far those assumptions are actually blinding them, distorting the real world that's out there and what they should do about it. Companies start believing in their dominant logic, they end up becoming prisoners of it. And companies can often spend much more time checking the accuracy of the data, not the validity of their assumptions. And I think that companies that stand the test of time, not just being around for a long time, but are truly adaptive in a fast changing world, find a way to challenge their most holy assumptions. And not with a critical lens, but just to say which of these assumptions is going to root us in the old game and make it difficult for us to access the new game. Dominant logic is a very powerful form of mental inertia. And the job of managers is to stop inertia in the modern enterprise.